Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying your holiday season with Christmas right around the corner. Uh, myself, I'm a little frustrated, obviously, because the Bills lost on Sunday to the Broncos. Before I get into that, I just want to say that uh, I figure I might as well mention this at the beginning of the video because I don't know if everyone makes it to the end. That uh, you know, if you want to talk about Bills and everything, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is the same as my username for YouTube. Uh, G-T-O-R-L-O-N-E, and I pretty much only talk about the Bills on there, some Sabres, some baseball. I, it's, it's, mo it's all sports, and it's mostly Bills. So you can talk to me on there. I answer just about everybody, um, you know, so you can find me on there. Uh, like I said, the Bills lost to the Broncos on Sunday, 24-17, to although admittedly it didn't really feel that close. I suppose the coolest thing that happened was that the Bills stopped Peyton Manning's streak of 51 straight games with a touchdown pass. I suppose that's cool. I believe they did that when Jerry Rice, I believe it was 274 straight games with a reception when he was with the Raiders. And they, I, I know that they stopped that streak. And I'm pretty sure they lost that game too. I believe it was 13-10 to 10 if I remember correctly. And the Bills lose this game 24-17. to 17. It's a game that they didn't really deserve to win, in my opinion. Uh, the defense did show up. The offense did not. Uh, you know, going back to what the defense did real quick, um, you know, despite not having any sacks, they showed up. They had a big game, and they played well in it. Uh, you know, they, they wanted a chance to prove how good, that, how good they were, and in my opinion, they did a pretty good job. A lot of people complained about the officiating. I'm not buying into that. Um, there were about there there might have been two bad calls in my opinion. I thought the Gilmore call was terrible. Uh, the Roby call, if it was on Roby, is terrible. But I heard that it was on Aaron Williams and he was just misidentified. So that's fine, I suppose. But um, the the I didn't like the Gilmore call at all. I thought that gave him points. And to put well, I mean the Bills could have stopped him after that, but it, it was third down. They would have punted the football more than likely, whatever. They didn't lose because of officiating. They lost because of offense. Uh, I don't really know why the Bills thought they could win playing the playing their game on the road in Denver against Peyton Manning. And you know what? And like I said, the defense played well, but I just don't think the Bills should have went forward with a game plan that I think they should have changed things up. And, and granted, in the first half, they tried a lot of misdirections. Uh, they were aggressive. They went for it on fourth and six, which was weird. It was I liked the call. It was weird because I thought Carpenter could make it from 57 yards in Denver, where the air is so thin and the ball tends to carry more. I thought Carpenter could have made that, but I don't hate the call to go for it. I, you know, admire your confidence. Um... But, you know, Denver is a good football team on both sides of the ball. They're top five in offense, top five in defense, and it showed. It showed on Sunday, and um, they were getting after Orton, who played, in my opinion, pretty poorly. I don't really want to hear that he had 355 yards. You know, Denver's playing lax in the fourth quarter, I think. I mean, granted, it came down, I, I, I know, it came down to an onside kick for the Bills, where it still would have been kind of a long shot, but they would have had a chance at it at least. Um, you know, that was, at least made it interesting, but I was watching it and just still never really feeling like they were in it. Of course they wanted them to recover that onside kick, but they didn't, unfortunately. They didn't really deserve it. Kyle Orton killed them, more or less, in the first half in the third quarter and then the fourth quarter against a uh, Denver defense that was playing preventatively, I suppose, he put up a bunch of yards. Um, like I said, I, I just I, I didn't appreciate, or not really appreciate, this isn't really the word, I just didn't, Kyle Orton didn't do anything for me as a fan on Sunday. Uh, I thought he might have some sort of animosity towards the Broncos because of the way that he left there, they caught him for Tim Tebow. Um, just didn't it just didn't show, and I think you've seen about as good as he can be. 
and teams are now sort of on to him. I didn't like the slide, obviously. It was a, a you know, a pretty big play where he was, appeared like he could have maybe got the first down but slid short of it. I mean, those are just things that losers do, really. Now, now I'm not calling Kyle Orton a loser. I mean, as a team, that's what losing teams do. They do things like that. Winners win, losers lose, and oftentimes they find the losers find an excuse like officiating or something like that. Does that sound familiar? What did I like from this game? Well, I didn't like at Kyle Orton attempting 57 passes and only 16 rushing plays. I know they're playing from behind, and that hurt. Uh, I don't know why Robert Woods was only targeted four times. That didn't make much sense to me. He's been one of the best players the past couple weeks. Watkins, probably the quietest 100-yard game ever. Seven for 127, but played pretty well. Uh, I like the defense. Obviously, I touched on that quickly. Manning was 14 of 20, but only 173 yards and two picks. C.J. Anderson had 21 carries for 58 yards. He had the three touchdowns. I mean, look at this. Like, you would think the Bills dominated this game. Kyle Orton threw for 355 yards. Peyton Manning threw for 173 and two picks. Kyle Orton was responsible for two touchdowns. Threw one to Hogan. Rushed for one. I can't even remember how they got the first one. Um, okay, Kyle Orton's responsible for a couple of touchdowns. Peyton Manning's not responsible for any. C.J. Anderson rushes for 58 yards. Emmanuel Sanders has four catches for 58 yards. Demarius Thomas has two catches for 11 yards. Julius Thomas doesn't even play a snap. And we lost! Pretty handily. Kudos to the defense once again. I continue to be impressed by you guys, specifically the defensive line, and I love what I'm seeing from Preston Brown and Nigel Bradham. i got to give those guys a shout-out. They're going to need it again because this week doesn't get any easier except for the benefit of a home game, if that is a benefit, because Aaron Rodgers and the Packers are coming to town. Noteworthy stat, the Green Bay Packers are 0-5 all-time in Buffalo. So... Hopefully history repeats itself. Uh, but the defense gets another opportunity to play uh, a big game, a playoff-like atmosphere game against a Super Bowl champion quarterback, and Green Bay appears to be a Super Bowl-caliber team. They are 10-3, and they're 7-0 and at home, and 3-3 three and three on the road. It's clear that they're not quite as good on the road. They lost to Seattle, great team, um, as much as it pains me to say. They lost to Detroit, who was good at the beginning of the season. They've sort of fallen back to earth, and they lost to New Orleans in New Orleans. And as much of a disaster as New Orleans has been, sometimes they, they, they just hit their stride that night. That was that was it. Uh, the games they won, they won close against Minnesota. They beat them by three. They won close against Miami. They beat them by three, and they blew out Chicago, and that's because Aaron Rodgers owns Jay Cutler's life. And that's a fact. The Bills might have an advantage because Green Bay's on a short week. They played on Monday Night Football against Atlanta. And you know what? That game kind of felt sort of similar to the Bills game in the sense that the Bills were the, the Atlanta Falcons and the Broncos were, were the Green Bay Packers because the Packers were up big, huge in the first half, in the second half. And Atlanta just kept battling back, and it came down to an onside kick, and they couldn't recover it. So, I mean, that game was so not over, as much as it felt like it the whole time. Um, you know, if Green Bay scored 50 on Chicago and the Eagles, they have won three games, and they were by three points, five points, and six points. So they're not, they're good. I, I can't take that away from them. They're a great team. And if they put up 40 points, the Bills are going to lose. There's no way the Bills are going to match a running gun offense with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, especially, you know, considering how good Rodgers has been this year. 35 touchdowns, three interceptions. All three interceptions have come on the road. But he's only thrown picks in two games against Seattle. One against Seattle, two against New Orleans. Um, he's thrown... This is, this is a pretty telling stat to me. He's thrown... Two or more touchdowns in every win. And in every loss, he's thrown only one touchdown pass. It's pretty telling. I think it is, at least. Uh, Green Bay, anyway, has won 
five games in a row. They've won nine out of ten since starting one and two. And here you go, D. Here you go again. Here's another chance for you to show how great you are. And you got to have it because, let's face it, I mean, this is, you're still in the playoff race. I know the chances are slim. I can see that. I can read. I can read articles. I can read playoff machines. I can see that. I know how slim the chances are of the Bills making the playoffs. But they're not usually 7-6 and six at this point in the season. They haven't been since 2000-whatever with Trent. 2007? 2007. And they were 7-6, and six and they lost to, was it Cleveland? And they went to 7-7, seven and seven and then Cleveland faltered anyway. That 8 nothing game that I was at in the snow was disgusting. It was so cold. And they lost 8 nothing. What a waste of time that was. I digress. The Bills are in the playoff hunt, okay? It's not completely out of the question that, okay, Kansas City plays Oakland. That's kind of rough. And Baltimore plays Jacksonville. That's kind of rough. Could Atlanta beat Pittsburgh at home? I don't see why not. Pittsburgh's lost to, like, Tampa Bay and, you know, some... And the Jets. <laughs> Could New England beat Miami at home? Yes, I think that they will. Could Cincinnati beat the Browns and Johnny Manziel? Yeah, I think that they will. I don't know that, but I think that they will. So if the Bills can win this game and get to 8-6, and six, they go into... They're all must-win games, obviously. I think we would all agree that. They go into Oakland, where they should win, even though they've beaten Kansas City and San Francisco there lately, where they should win. If you get to 9-6 and six going into New England, I mean, I know, I know, I'm delusional, I know. And I'm talking to myself here. This is what makes me, it's even more crazy. You guys are watching this, but really I'm having a conversation with myself. And this is what the Bills do to me. They make me crazy. Let's get back to the Packers. Aaron Rodgers. Like I said, 35 touchdowns, 3 picks. Uh... You can't, I, I, I use this analogy on Twitter. He is Michael Vick in Madden 2004. He's a glitch and you can't stop him when he's at Lambeau. You can contain him when he's not. Um, he has mobility in and out of the pocket. That's one of the, his best attributes. He has a 10 yard, a, a 10 plus yard rush in four straight games and six out of seven games. Those are, I mean, I, I don't want him taking off when everyone's covered. But he will do it. And he's successful at doing it. Because I'm pretty sure, I feel like the Bills can cover Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson. Not necessarily consistently, but there will be plays where they have them covered. Undoubtedly. Can't let Aaron Rodgers get loose. They have Eddie Lacy. They have James Starks. They both average over four yards of carry. Lacy has 11 total touchdowns, seven rushing, four receiving. Nelson and Cobb each have double-digit touchdowns. I believe Nelson has 12 and Cobb has 10. I know how good the offense is. I can see that. Their defense, though, hasn't been great. They're 20th against the pass. They're 25th against the run. If they, there's a little bit of a weakness there. Did you see Julio Jones on Monday? 11 catches, 259 yards, the most yards the Packers have ever allowed receiving to one player. Well, do, do you have maybe like a guy like Julio Jones? What do you think? Hey, Doug Marone, Nate Hackett. Do you have like, I don't know, and maybe not your, maybe not Julio Jones, but maybe your own version of Julio Jones? Sammy Watkins? Get the guy the ball. I just need to see. I, uh, Kyle needs to stay upright. Kyle needs to stand tall in the pocket and make throws, give his guys chances. You watch the all-22 from Jeremy White. He shows how Orton really hindered the Bills. It's great stuff. You guys should read that on WGR550.com. Anyway, i got to make a prediction and get out of here. Before I drive myself insane. Bills play the Packers. Guys, I just, I, I'm just i going to pick the Packers. 27-20. Over the Bills. And I, but I, I, know, I must stress for you. If you have tickets. If you want to go to the game. Go! I just saw the game sold out. Excellent. This is the Bills playing a Super Bowl caliber team. In December. And it, it does matter. I don't care if you don't think if you think we're out of it, it does matter. So be there. All right, guys. Thank you for coming this far into the video this week and every week if you do. I appreciate all of you loyal followers. Have a great weekend 
And as always, go Bills.